Hi, so I just wanted to give a quick video for students who are choosing to use Minitab as an alternative to Microsoft Excel. Minitab is great because it's cloud-based and it works across all platforms, including devices and iPads. Here, we're just gonna do the first project um, really quickly. And what I'm going to do is just show you how to get the information of the descriptive statistics here from Excel and also the box plot from Excel. So here, if you have Microsoft Excel, then it's installed in your computer. It's not a big deal. You just, you know, use the data analysis tool for both of these and follow the walkthrough video here. So if you want to use Minitab to, again, um, let me show, replace this table and this box plot from Excel, then what we could do is go ahead and download that CSV file um, right here. So you can save to the desktop and right click the file and put open with. Since I'm on a Mac, it tends to always want to open up in numbers, but um, it usually gives a list of other ones. I always try to make my my default spreadsheet is Microsoft Excel, but I think Mac just really likes numbers, but Microsoft Excel is the one we would want to use. So you would want to go ahead and just click that and allow it to open in Microsoft Excel. And it opens Microsoft Excel and it looks like, um, you know, a big long list of cities like this. So what I did to get the filter, I went ahead and highlight the first call, first row, and I went ahead and selected um, A to Z sort filter right here. And I just clicked filter, and then it brought up these little down arrows. And the reason why I did that is because I don't wanna go through like 500 city names. I just wanna go ahead and just look up Dana Point, the city that I signed up for on the Google Sheet. So notice that here I have about 15 years of total expenditures, estimated population, and expenditures per capita. But I went ahead and picked estimated population for this particular city. So what I can do now is take this data here that I see and enter it on my mini tab spreadsheet. So I assume that students have already um, set an account with Minitab and they're already to log in at this point. So if you go ahead it, and log into Minitab, it look, the, the cloud-based looks something like this. So because it's cloud-based, it doesn't work as smoothly as like an installed program, right? So, but I still love it and I think it works excellent. So I went ahead and moved my spreadsheet around and I'll let me move my other Safari window. And I'm just gonna go ahead and enter these values here, right here. And in fact, right here in this gray little box, I'm just gonna put um, estimated population. And in the first cell, I'm gonna go ahead and enter the all the population um, from the spreadsheet. So 33,415 and then uh, so on. So go ahead and take a moment to do that. If you're, you know, since you're using Minitab, you'll have to enter them. Okay, so that's what that looks like. And so now everything is really fast. So now all we have to do is it's like similar to our calculator where we would hit stat, basic stats, display descriptive statistics. So you'll just go to stat, basic statistics, and display descriptive statistics. Go ahead and click that. And it's gonna ask for a variable. Variables are just the column names. So notice on this left side, it says C1 estimated population. And that's what we want. We want C1 estimated population. That was the column we wanted. So it's really nice that it already knows what columns that we're using. And so I just double click like that and it goes into variables. The next piece of thing that I would do is it gives all these great options. So click statistics and you'll scan, you're going to see this ginormous number of amount of, of information. It's so wonderful. Um, and so you can calculate the variance if you wanted, um, interquartile range, um, 
you know, range. I mean, just all of these that are just so nice. If we go back to the project, it seems like we only need maybe um, <clears throat> central tendency measures of dispersion. So um, if we go here, we can go ahead um, and include the range um, standard deviation, right? Range standard deviation. Those are the measures of dispersion. The measures of te central tendency is going to be the mean, the median, right? And the mode. And then we also are going to, don't forget, we're going to compute the five number summary. So to compute the five number summary, this one's really nice because we can notice the first quartile, medium, third quartile, and then um, the min and max. And notice the min and max are there. So the only one we had to click extra was actually the mode and the range. And um, that's pretty much it and hit OK. The next thing I would do is click graphs. If we click graphs, it gives us this whole list that we need that we could use. And in fact, we need a box plot of our data. So just click that. It's all in one shot. It's so great. And hit OK. Now you are ready to have your statistics displayed. So hit OK. And so notice we get this really nice box plot um, and it gives us the Q1, like it, the whiskers, everything, and then this long list of a bunch of stuff. Notice there's no mode here, but it does give us the standard deviation, which is 1609, and the average is 35,000. So the average population for Dana Point is 35,391, give or take 1,600 people per year with a range of 3,911. So it gives you a bunch of information that you need for your project. And here's the box plot. Notice with the box plot, you can always copy the graph and also this table you can copy. So for the graph here, I noticed that it doesn't, it only allows us to copy the box plot. If you went ahead and went ahead and went to the graph tab here and went down to box plot, you'll see that you're going to have a whole bunch of different types of box plots. So you'll hit simple and hit OK. And it brings you up this other window. <laughs> and you'll go ahead and select estimated population. So here, um, you, what, you, what we're trying to do is see if there's any more options. So if we click options, it tells us the data that it can display. Notice it's only telling us the interquartile range box and outlier symbols, but um, we can transpose the X and Y axis. So we can actually make it look like in particularly mini tab, which makes it so great like our textbook and how we've been doing it in the homework. So if I just click that and hit OK and hit OK one more time, it gives us a nice box plot of what it looked like in our book. So if you did this descriptive statistics with the box plot, that works nicely, but it gives you a vertical box. But if you went ahead and individually went to graph, box plot in the same steps we just went through, it displays um, this nice box plot horizontally. Now it's just really up to you. We can see that this is skewed left here and so the mean will be less than the median. Um, so let me go ahead and go to our project and I'll show you how to insert the project um, these, this information. If I go to my example, notice I have the table there and then the population from uh, it's box plot from Excel. Notice it's vertical. So in our case, when we go back here to post one, we're going to have this really nice horizontal box plot and this little nice table of descriptive statistics. So let me go ahead and add a new thread. And I'm just gonna, you're gonna make it look nice following the walkthrough, but if I just click here, copy, you know, then you could paste and it comes really nicely, you know, in a nice little box. And you can always go to table properties here and 
you know, click gridded so it looks nice and gridded. And you can also like smoosh it in if you need to or widen the window like that. If you want to go ahead and insert the box plot, you know, at the very last step right before you interpret, you could copy the vertical one, or if you decided to do the horizontal one, you could always um, copy the graph here. There are some graph options, which is really cool. Um, so if you wanted to, you know, make it like box plot of estimated population, and then you could do like a subtitle Dana point. So it has like a nice little title. Okay, and hit copy graph. And then here I can just go right click and just hit paste. And it should paste it pretty nicely. Hopefully I can, there we go. <laughs> and you can always fix the picture in my open math. It's, it has a really nice forum. And so at this point, you can see that um, it would look the same as my example, but the table looks like this, and then the box plot would look like that. And then, you know, you would continue with the steps. But um, copy and pasting for Minitab is really nice. It works out really clean, and it's a great alternative to Microsoft Excel if you wanted to use that.